it's Dina Tollefson and welcome to my studio. I'm so glad to have you here with me today. So today's video is going to be a lot of fun. It's an art collaboration with my friend and fellow YouTuber Mando Teresia. So Mando is a wonderful artist from Sweden and we're friends and we decided that we were going to do a collaboration where we're both going to do koi in our work. So I have done some paintings before that just kind of had little indications of koi, but I've never actually painted koi as the subject. And Mando has done some work with mermaids, which involve tails, uh, fish tails, and that type of thing. So we thought that would be kind of a neat intersection between our two, our two bodies of work. Mando does a lot of digital portraits, and she has this signature eye highlight that I just love. So if you are not already subscribed to Mando, I encourage you to check her out and give her some love and subscribe to her. She's really funny and insightful and very kind, and I can't say enough about her. So here in my palette, I'm squeezing out a little bit of acrylic paint. This is, a, uh, this is all paint from Golden Acrylics, heavy bodied acrylics. Adding a little bit of this Mars Black. And we'll make up a nice natural looking green. I'm using a palette knife to, actually that's a painting knife. The painting knife has a little hook at the end. So I'm using this painting knife to mix up the color and then that saves my brushes from getting all kinds of gunk uh, up inside and makes it easier to clean. It's simple to wipe off the, the knife. And uh, going in with a nice uh, large round paintbrush. Using a swirling motion to describe the lily pad. There we go. Just nice and easy on the canvas. And I'm working in layers here. The color that you see that is covering the entire canvas is a golden yellow ochre. And I tone the canvas with this color because it's a new, both a neutral color. It's neither warm nor cool. It's, uh, you can make your own version of yellow ochre by taking yellow plus diaxazine purple. And this kind of golden color will peek through everywhere on the painting and kind of brings the whole painting together. Getting the initial color on these lily pads. And a shadow. I've made too big of a line of my shadow, so now, well now I'm, I dipped it in and I have to wipe, let me wipe off the extra, just dip it in the water and get some fresh paint on. There we go. And just lay that color in. Very good. Now a little bit of phthalo blue red shade. And a, a small amount of pyrrole orange and some titanium white. And the orange and the blue together will make a gray color, a neutral. And it's important to me to have enough neutrals in my painting so that there's balance between bright colors and neutrals. So when you're creating your own works of art, you'll have in your mind if you want them, what proportion of brights to neutrals you're looking for. Some people want only bright, some people only want neutrals, and some people, if you're like me, you like kind of a mix between the two. So now I'm laying in the phthalo blue red shade here for the darkest areas. And 
and I've got a small amount of the pyrrole orange mixed in with that blue to uh, again to gray it down so compositionally I'm looking to have a small section of light colored water and then the majority of the water I'd like to be a very dark color so it would contrast well with what I'm planning to be uh, one large light colored fish this guy here in the middle this koi and then uh, and then these other smaller koi which are also going to be brightly colored but they'll be kind of of a medium value I'm just using this large round brush here to just lay in the strokes and I'm thinking about the direction of the strokes thinking about the way the water is in the pond and how the fish are moving about and making that water in the pond so that it's not calm water, it's very active water. I'm also following the idea of connecting my darks together. So there's a uh, principle in painting to simplify your subject. If you try and connect your darks, it's going to be uh, a little easier for the eye to read. So all this dark section is all connected together. And then based on how hard I'm pressing with the brush and how much paint I'm applying, allowing certain areas of that underpainting to peek through and create some kind of maybe areas of mystery. Now going in with phthalo blue, red shade, and some titanium white, and a little bit of that pyrrole orange and that color that we mixed up, applying that now. So this will be the light color or the lightest part of the water in our painting. Now next to our largest koi, I'm um, thinking about having a little creature in the water and he sits below. I haven't decided yet if I want him to be a frog or I want him to be a fish. So I think for now I'm thinking of him like a, like a fish, but we might change it to frog later. just working around the lily pads and the tails of these koi that are frolicking around in the pond. Get right up close here to Mr. Fish. There we go. So sometimes I'm pressing down hard with the brush and sometimes just letting it kind of flick across the surface also to try and get a variety of, um, of marks on, on the canvas. And now scumbling that color across. When we scumble something, that means that we're um, bringing the brush, a dry, rather dry brush, across a previously dried area. And so the color will sit on the top and kind of intermix with the color below. So in our pond that we have, in our backyard, we have some koi and they've gotten, it's a roughly two acre pond and so they've gotten, these koi have gotten really large. Some of them are like over 18 inches now. And then sadly some of them have met their end uh, with, oh gosh, one of them was eaten by a river otter and then we had another one that had a, uh, um, oh gosh, some kind of a bird or I think somebody got him. But we do have some of these, and I think about these koi, and they're very brightly colored. And so inside the pond, 
We have all kinds of other animals. We've got uh, wild mink that can, a lot of people don't know that wild mink can swim, but they can swim very beautifully and they can also do well on the land. And there are muskrat and of course granddad beavers in there. And then uh, multiple different types. There's some game fish and some catfish. We've got the koi, bluegill, lots of different turtles. We have some soft shell turtles and some snapping turtles. And the snapping turtles came, uh, one of the females came and laid eggs up in our, over near the, near, um, went all the way up the hill and then over near the street. There's a uh, area that has like a little brick pylon area and then she went and was putting her eggs there. So I'm hoping that they will survive this summer and incubate in the warmth and then we'll be able to make it over to the pond. So just laying the brush very softly on top of the fish so that there's a little bit of water on these guys. titanium white. Let's see if we can add a little bit of color to these koi. A little bit more white here. I'm going to grab a little bit of the green from the lily pads, which was yellow plus the tiniest amount of black, and make up kind of a warm color. going in with a filbert brush. This is an American painter filbert. And indicating the highlights on the top of Mr. Fish. And this fish is a larger guy and he's got kind of a bony um, ribbed back. laying on just scumbling a little bit of this light color on the top and be developing many layers of color here. So we have an underpainting, the tone canvas, and then we've got the underpainting to just lay in the sh basic shapes of the fish and then over the top can lay the color over the top. Get some of that pyro orange scrubbed in. And just slowly building up the layers. And using these pure pigments to brighten and uh, intensify the color in the painting. And I'm following the contours of Mr. Fish. As I'm working and thinking about his long body and thinking about him swimming in the water. My plan is for that this fish is going to be uh, sitting underneath and swimming underneath one of the lily pads. So I want to get him kind of painted, but not painted with too much detail, since he's going to be slightly under the water. He'll have some highlight, but not as much as the uh, as the focal point fish will. We'll call him Mr. Fish. This orange fish won't have as much as uh, Mr. Fish.
koi are such elegant and uh, beautiful fish when they swim they have their curved bodies and they like to they're very gregarious they love to stay together in little groups so our koi you, if you see one of them you usually are seeing the other ones all kind of together they like to swim in a line or swim all in a curved shape and now when I'm looking at the painting I feel like I'd like to darken and make it a little bit more dramatic so I'm adding the phthalo blue red shade with a little bit of the uh, pyrrole orange and laying another layer of dark color over the first layer And that's a little tip if you're looking to add drama to your to your artwork uh, make, then make sure to have some areas that are very dark and some areas that are very light and automatically that contrast will help um, with a feeling of drama and already I'm liking this better having a darker background against Mr. Fish. Now just using my same, that same round um, brush, going in and just scumbling that color over the top of the lighter area as well. Since I'm darkening the first dark area, then I'm also going to be darkening portions of the lighter area as well. Brushing some of that blue up onto his body. And now on this the right side of the painting for balance I'm going to also increase the level of dark a little of this orange mixed right in with the blue creates this very nice inky dark color and I'm not going to put it everywhere I want to just have certain passages to read as darker kind of more nuanced So I'm using a light touch here. There we go. Now to work on the lily pads some more. So these lily pads have a uh, the top of the lily pad has kind of a radiation or a radial pattern from the center there are these ribs that come out from the um, or that uh, these ribbed forms on the top of the lily pad and they radiate out like a Sun so I want to kind of capture that feeling without being too literal about it I want to kind of capture that feeling of the um, of the tops of the lily pads radiating out. So just nice and loose, taking that small flat uh, brush, the long handle, just working that color in, but I'm trying to just do it in a very loose and free manner. get that radiated feeling on all of the lily pads just nice and loose giving the feeling of the energy of that lily pad
few more lines uh, up here on this top pad. Here we go. I'm going to do some final blending and uh, final little touches here with the phthalo blue red shade and uh, pyro orange and titanium white mixture. Just adding a few little marks here. I'm going to get some paint up over on the fish off uh, the black and white fish. And then also in the middle, I decided I want to make that kind, the guy kind of be a frog kind of a form. Maybe he's a frog or he's some kind of a, a pond creature, but something kind of uh, nebulous and we aren't quite sure what he is. But now it's time to sign. So I'm using a liner brush and then I added just a small amount of water to uh, the Mars Black. And I can sign here all with one stroke of paint. And I hope that you will subscribe to my channel if you aren't already, and, and also subscribe to Mando's. And I'm so excited to see what she's come up with. So I hope that you'll watch her video as well. So until next time, this is Dina Tollefson. All my best to you. Bye-bye.